It's almost impossible to choose a 3D printer nowadays without feeling a little bit of buyer's remorse. After all, once you get something two weeks later, even if it was the latest and greatest, you'll find that another manufacturer has come out with something greater and better. And whilst you can wait around for that perfect model, you're going to be waiting forever. So whilst Frozen already had the best quality printer on the market in terms of pixel size, they've decided to one-up themselves by re-releasing that product again, but now at entry-level prices. So how have they done that? What's the catch and what's wrong with it? Well, that's what I'm here to tell you. So hi, I'm Ross, this is Farhammer Videos, and let's take a look at the Sonic Mini 8KS. So that's right, this is a Sonic Mini 8K again, but there are some differences, and I was gonna do a second video as a comparison of the Sonic Mini 8KS versus the Mini 8K, but what's the point? I can get it all done in this one, and I don't wanna waste your time just to increase views artificially. So if you haven't already seen my video on the Sonic Mini 8K, the original one with the orange lid, I do suggest you go back and have a quick watch of that now, just because that'll kind of set up some of the things that I'm gonna talk about in this video. On paper though, the printers are fairly similar. They both have exactly the same screen resolution and same screen size, so your printing volume is 16.5 by 7.2 by 17 centimeters. That's one centimeter shorter in height than the original Sonic Mini 8K. But the main practical difference I saw is that when I got my Sonic Mini 8K, I had technical issue after technical issue. And that happens, it happens with all the brands. On every video I see, I see people saying, I won't buy from this brand again because I had X issue. But I see that with every brand. It all happens, I'm sorry, it's the same with cars. Sometimes people are gonna get lemons and I've had my fair share of broken 3D printers. So it was absolutely heaven for me because this is my first frozen printer where I haven't had a single technical issue at all. I just unwrapped the printer and started setting up my printing with it, doing some exposure tests, which is kind of broken and I'll come on to shortly. But what's more importantly to shout about is how much of an achievement this printer is. Because little over 18 months ago, you would be paying nearly a grand for this sort of printer. Nowadays, they're releasing this printer at equivalent entry-level printer prices, and I'm comparing this as release price to something like the Mars 3 Pro. And it's worth noting that for the small window that those people will see this video before it actually gets released, if you get in early with a pre-order, not only do you get, I think it's $50 off, I think they also bundle in an extra bottle of resin. Going back to the comparison with the original Sonic Mini 8K though, very little has actually changed. You know, the plastic bits are still plastic, a lot of the metal bits are still metal. The only real difference is the fact that this one comes with a single linear rail as opposed to the dual linear rails, but I've had no issues with stability. And I believe that's because of the large and sturdy C frame that's not only on the Sonic Mini 8KS, but is actually adopted now by more printer manufacturers to keep a single linear rail and reduce the costs but most of it's the same. Things like the vats are similar. Yes, there's some slight design issues, but nothing I'd really write home about. I don't know if this has cut costs in any way. It's slightly different, but it doesn't seem like a different material. It's not that one's metal and one's plastic, they're both metal. And Frozen aren't being shy about the fact that they've found a way to reduce costs in manufacturing and allow this printer now to be offered at a cheaper price point. But what is interesting is when you look at what they've done to reduce costs, one of which being moving the USB port from the front to the back side on the left hand side of the machine. And I have commented on USB port placement on all of my printer reviews. I prefer it on the front, it's more convenient. Yet I do get a lot of detracting comments telling me that I'm wrong and the only reason companies put it on the side is not to cut costs at all, but because it's a smarter place to put it to protect it from resin spills. Yet this printer that comes out targeted at the lower price point, one of the most obvious things they've done is move the USB port to the side. They even list it on their website as one of the changes. Most of the other differences must be internal because I genuinely can't spot any. Okay, there's the badge on the front which is now fully printed as opposed to an embossed Mini 8K logo. But what's really got me scratching my head is not only is this printer cheaper than the original Mini 8K, it's better too, in a few ways. I can't notice any fan vents on it for one, and when it's turned on, I can't hear it other than the rhythmic whir of the build plate moving up and down. I wouldn't even know that it's there. But one of the best things they've done 
is have a screen protector installed from the factory. You've normally got a piece of film to peel off, but if you look closely and don't get your fingernails under this, just pull the green tab, you'll actually find that there's still a protective film on the glass beneath this. One of the reasons I had such a problem with the original Mini 8K is because if anything got on that screen, there was nothing to protect it. It was just bare polarizer below the FEP film. And these screens aren't cheap to replace. If you get resin on the LCD without a screen protector mid print, let's say it's due to a punctured FEP film or something, as soon as the light gets on that, it's gonna cure. And getting that off your LCD is nigh on impossible without some level of damage to the screen. So yeah, whilst Frozen have reduced costs for us to make this printer more accessible to more people, they've actually done it in a smart way and included this as an extra benefit that actually makes it a better printer. And they haven't even cut down on the included tool set. You still get a box with Allen keys, gloves, some filters for your resin, a funnel, even a sanding plate if you want to sand your build plate smooth. And you also get, as usual, a cheap rubbish USB drive. And I say as usual, but the Mini 8K, at least for me, the original one, came with a SanDisk USB stick. This is a cheap, generic, unbranded one, and unsurprisingly, actually broke halfway through my printing and reviewing with it. So thankfully I've got spare and I copied the files onto my PC before this happened. But no matter what I do with this one now, my PC just will not read it. It won't even recognize it in computer management. But they do still care enough to give us a scraper with the Frozen logo etched into it. They don't need to do this, could have just gave us a cheap one, so nice. And when it comes to operation, the UI is, well, it's it's good. It's, it's a bit better than fine. It's not quite as good as something like the Mighty 8K from Frozen, which is really high resolution and has a screensaver, but everything's there. It's neatly laid out and it's intuitive. So I doubt you're gonna have problems with it and it's slightly better than what most of the other manufacturers will offer with their printers. Things like leveling, whilst not automatic at all, it still walks you through the process better than most other brands will do too. Instead of following an instruction manual in one hand whilst unscrewing things in the other and pressing buttons on the screen, when you go to the leveling part of the actual UI, it will tell you what to do at each stage of it, so you don't need to worry about how you're going to do it. Now I did cheat at this bit because previously I had a problem with the Mini 8K. Was it one sheet of paper, two sheets, a piece of paper folded up, three sheets of paper? There were many trains of thought. But once you understand that the point of those papers is just to fill the gap that the FEP leaves, you'll realize that actually just put the VAT in and then level it with the VAT in. It's so much easier. And you can even do this with resin in, it's just, just really messy. And if you like this trick, brilliant. Leave a comment and say thanks down below, but you're not actually thanking me, you're thanking people who've commented on other videos. So if you've got any other good 3D printing tips, make sure you leave that as a comment down below so I can share it in future videos. And if you disagree with this approach, well, I'd say leave a comment, but don't worry, you'll tell me. Now, before I get onto print quality and talking about some of the lies that other YouTubers are spreading, I do want to talk about the looks of this printer because even though in most reviews I've said, who cares about the look? Well, this thing looks different and there's a very specific reason. It's the lid. Now, as soon as I saw these, one thing came to my mind, the 1990s Lego Space Blacktron series of models. And just to prove that point and bring it home, I actually went to eBay and bought some of those classic models just so I can do this footage comparing it to the printer. You can't tell me that one isn't inspired by the other. These are the same thing. They're absolutely gorgeous. And even though these are only a couple of sets, it actually cost me about 28 quid. So I could really do with about 15 to 20,000 views on this video just to pay back the models that I bought for this one point. So if you could like, comment and subscribe, that'd be, that'd be excellent then I can buy myself more Lego and compare it to more printers. I'm sure that was a valuable segment. Thanks for watching. But the point is, printer's pretty, in it. So then, let's actually print some stuff. And before I do that, I want to show you how I pour resin in. And for anybody who knows why I do this and can get the answer right, pop it down in the comments and you get 10 internet points, which you can redeem for bragging rights once I confirm that you got the right answer. 
So if you've watched any of my previous videos, then I give you a guide as often as I can on how to get the correct exposure for your models, and I have a full video on this coming soon. But for now, let me just run through it again quickly. I always print this flat Photonster's exposure test, and the reason for that is because it takes about 10 minutes, whereas other prints that will give me a better accuracy reading for the best exposure settings will take about two hours. I want it done quick, this is quick. And when that's done, I will count the number of holes and posts on the left-hand side of the print. If I have more posts, then I'm overexposing. If I have more holes, then that's underexposing. I'm looking to get the correct exposure time for a normal layer so that I have an equal number of posts and holes, and that will give me a balanced exposure that's measurable. However, that's not the best exposure. I always just up it a couple of tenths of a second. Normally. Now with this being a new printer, I can't follow my normal process of going to Lychee and stealing somebody else's profile and transferring it into Chitubox. But what I can do is take my Sonic Mini 8K profile and start printing with that on this printer. And I'll get into more on that and how that journey went in a moment, but first let me talk about a couple of things. One. Whenever this finished printing, the print bed raised all the way to the top, and just like I've had with previous printers from other brands, what that meant was the wet resin, and this resin is quite drippy, went all the way into the vat and splashed, and went all over the inside of this really gorgeous lid, which is a little bit disappointing, but it happens. It's not the worst thing in the world, but it's dead pretty, and I want to keep it pretty. And the second thing I want to talk about is other YouTubers. So, do any of you know of Dennis Wang? Well, whilst he was reviewing this, even though I wasn't allowed to post any footage until this review went live, Dennis was posting videos on his shorts showing that you can actually get this printer to print with the 8K resin at 0.2 seconds per layer. And just like Dolores Umbridge told Harry Potter, this is a lie. So I copied some settings over from Lychee, as I mentioned before, and I started with exposure times of 1.8 seconds per 20 micron layer and 25 seconds base layer exposure time. Nothing wrong with that, pretty standard based on what I've tested recently. The result was a print that was so adhered to the build plate, I actually had to heat up the plate and resin using a heat gun just to get it off without shattering. This immediately suggested to me that at least the base layers are overexposed. And considering this is a laser etched build plate, yep, they haven't cheaped out on that either, then this is going to really adhere and it's going to be a nightmare to get anything off. But what I also noticed when counting the holes and posts is that this print was overexposed. So I dropped my exposure time down to 1.5 seconds and my base exposure to 18 seconds. And once again, I have an overexposed print that's welded to the build plate. And it is worth noting if you want to repeat these settings that the temperature in my room was around 24 degrees at the time, just because we're starting to get into summer now. So if you want to use these settings, then you're going to need the same temperatures or do your own tests. Sorry, that's how it works. So I went down again, lowest I've gone in in recent memory, to 1.3 seconds and 15 seconds base exposure time. And it's still shattering and it's still overexposed. Wow, this is a powerful light. And I can't believe I'm doing this because I've never done it before with a printer that hasn't got a built-in heater, but I actually dropped the exposure time down to 0.9 seconds and I dropped the base exposure time down to 10 seconds. And once again, it was pretty stiff on the build plate, but at least it came off in one piece, but it was still overexposed when counting the holes and posts. All right then, printer, you wanna try me? Let's have a go at 0.5 seconds with nine seconds base exposure. And it's still overexposed. All right, fine. And bear in mind, I hadn't seen Dennis Wang's video at this point. I tested on my own 0.2 seconds. And still a bit overexposed but it worked it actually worked so i printed off the wolverine model that i've printed with every printer and i've got about 30 of these now and yeah not only did it work it was still well adhered to the build plate in fact that's one negative i'll put with this printer i don't know why maybe it's this build plate maybe it's this resin and how hard the light cures the resin, but it is a bit of a pain to get this specific resin off this plate when I've got the same resin off smoother build plates much easier. Maybe that's why they include the sandpaper. It might be a good idea to just take this etching off, but 
hey oh, it's there, and you've just got to be a little more forceful. But the print worked. 0.2 seconds, the print worked. I immediately emailed Frozen and said, no, I, I, up until this point, I would have thought that was impossible. And I went to bed that night thinking, how? How have they done this? How have they made a light so powerful that it cures this resin in 0.2 seconds? They haven't. So to prove this point, and this is the bit where the thumbnail says the printer's broken. It's not really broken because, look, just go with me on this. So I set up my GoPro at 240 frames a second with a piece of paper on the printer, and I took the build plate out and the vat so that I could actually see the layers being exposed one at a time. And as you can see in the settings, it clearly says this is exposing each layer at 0.02 seconds. But using my GoPro at 240 frames a second with a stopwatch next to it, or in my case, my iPhone with timer on it, then I can actually slow down the footage and see how long it takes for the image to come on the screen and then for it to disappear and determine if that is actually 0.2 seconds. So this test isn't 100% accurate and the reason being is the GoPro will capture frames at 240 frames a second, whereas the iPhone screen for the iPhone I have only refreshes at 60 frames a second, so you don't get the exact numerical increments for each frame but it's enough for me to calculate when the screen of the printer comes on and when it goes off and to give me at least a rough distance. But what it did allow me to easily determine is that the screen actually starts rendering the image and it takes 0.05 seconds to fully render. And then it's one complete second later that the entire display goes off. Now, the image rendering front to back and the half a millisecond difference for it to do that is common on any LCD printer. I've seen it every time I've run this sort of test. But the interesting thing is that it completely ignores the 0.02 settings, and instead what I've got is a full second for it to actually expose each layer. So when I'm saying the printer's broken, Yes, it's joking, Dennis Wang is right on his thumbnail. My thumbnails are slightly clickbait. I apologize for that, but I'd rather you at least click and come and watch my video so I can inform you than just ignore it, which so many people were doing before. And the truth is, Dennis is also not a liar as I've claimed to be. This was actually something that he and I discussed and we talked about doing this test. Doing this test and showing it on camera was actually his idea. So I do want to give a good shout out to Dennis Wang and say thanks for being a good sport. I've been a big watcher of his for a long time and if you want to get the most out of these printers, he goes to an insane level of depth with his various types of testing. So if you want to get the most out of your Sonic Mini 8KS, then definitely check his channel out. When it's all said and done, what really matters with these printers is the results. And yes, just like before, the Sonic Mini 8KS is still the unrivaled champion when it comes to the pixel size of any consumer grade printer at only 22 microns. From a normal distance, things like the Wolverine bust I typically print still looks incredibly sharp on this printer, just as it does with similar printers. The difference in quality with this though isn't the same as a jump from 2 to 4K in a similar sized printer. We're actually at the point of diminishing returns, but the truth is this printer is still capable of sharper results than anything else. And normally I'll always print some miniatures, or in this case some parts for miniatures, but what I've done previously is print models from the likes of One Page Rules because they're comparable to Warhammer figures. But what I can't do anymore is continue to print models like that because these printers are such high quality now that those models with their smooth surfaces and large forms don't show off the ability that these printers are actually capable of. So I've opted to go in with Creature Caster and start printing some of their miniatures. And for the first time ever, I've gone the opposite way. Typically I'd take something from Black Forge Games and shrink it down to miniature scale at 32 millimeters but with Creature Caster, I can actually take one of their 32mm miniatures and print it out at 75mm, and it's still an incredible piece of art. 
But one thing I did notice on these prints, especially early on, is that you are still getting some voxel lines. Layer lines, not so much anymore because we're printing at 0.02 microns, but you do still get some voxelization where the layers have been stacked on top of each other, depending on the angle of certain surfaces. If, for example, you zoom in on the shoulder of this cyborg ninja and use a macro lens, you can clearly see that you do have some voxelization still there. But at the same time I printed that, I also printed this model, which is by Loot Studios. It's from their Cyberpunk 80 something series. And it was the last model of theirs I ever printed because the supports on these are so terribly excessive that it just puts me off printing anything from them ever again. But it is an awesome model. And for any Red Rising fans out there, like this is my vision when I think of Darrow of Lycos, like this is what I think he would look like. Get this painted in gold. I think this would look exactly how I imagine him from the books. But coming back to the voxel lines that you get on these miniatures, the one on the left actually has no anti-aliasing or image blur applied, whereas the one on the right has two times image blur and two times anti-aliasing. And you can see the difference here clear as day. One of them has lines and jaggies all up the surface, whereas the other one is as smooth as a production part. So if you're printing miniatures or pieces from miniatures like these ones here from Grey Tide Studio, you can actually get them just as smooth as you would want them if you bought them from a factory. But it is worth noting that it's still resin and it's printer resin. It's more brittle than most of the stuff you'll be used to. So even though you get sharp details on this, I'd mix in something softer like some tenacious resin in order to soften it and just give it a little bit more flexibility. Otherwise, as soon as you drop this, the pieces are just going to snap. But just to really drive home that point about no layer lines ever anywhere, you can't see them anymore. This is the model that I scaled up to 75 millimeters, which was around 230 something percent of the original 32 millimeter scale. And this creature caster model looks absolutely incredible as a standout piece on its own. And just applying some dry brushing over this using the AK generation three paints, you can see that all the surfaces pop out and all the details are there, but there's not a single layer layer line in sight and dry brushing is typically one of those techniques that makes layer lines pop out everywhere but yeah just look at these creature caster models i mean they've already got a history of being incredible sculptors and it's hard to look at their website without crying that you can't afford anything so if anyone's going to make 3d stl files i'm glad it's these guys and Sorry, one page rules. It was a great time spending with you in the last few months and through printer reviews, but sorry, in comparison to these things, you're basic. I can't believe I just said that. So all in all, the Sonic Mini 8KS is everything that the Sonic Mini 8K is, but I would argue better. And it's prettier because of that lid. Like I genuinely can't think of a reason why I'd recommend the original 8K over this one, especially at the price point. And if you're somebody looking at getting your first 3D printer, well, you'll get similar sized printers at the same-ish price point. So if you're considering it spending two to $300 on a printer, definitely 100% push that little bit extra to get this because of the quality it is capable of. Frozen were already king of the hill when it comes to pixel size on a consumer grade 3D printer. And the only people or company to come along and beat them was Frozen with the same resolution, cheaper. Why would you not want this? Thanks everyone for watching. I really appreciate you being here. And if you've got any helpful comments, please put them down below. If you've got any nasty comments, then like I said earlier, I don't need to ask, you're already gonna put them there. I wanna say a huge thanks to our patrons who are sponsoring us and helping us with these videos. Without them, we wouldn't be able to do this. So if you want your name up in the credits like these awesome people, then make sure you join us on our Patreon channel. The links are down below in the description. Also, if you wanna support us and wanna buy one of these printers, again, the links are down in the description. If you click those links before you buy, we make a commission with no extra cost to you and it lets the manufacturers know that you wanna keep seeing us making videos. So they'll keep sending us printers. I like printers. That's kind of my thing now. At some point, I will get back to talking about miniatures, but I've got a website for that. Until I see you guys next time, thanks for watching. Fohammer out.